Welcome to the weightlifting platform where the heavier it gets, the fewer reps we have to do. The weightlifting platform is brought to you by the Pan American Weightlifting Federation. I'm your host, Richard Mason. On this week's show, he's the first world medalist from his home country in how many years? And that medal is gold. He's an Olympian as well, and he's only 20 years old to beat Enzo. For our tip of the week, the ins and outs of training from a Tokyo Olympian from Indonesia and our regular feature, good to know, therapeutic use exemptions, when they're granted and when they won't. But first, what are the headlines? It is the quietest time in the weightlifting calendar. Athletes are preparing for the upcoming Commonwealth Games qualifying tournaments at the end of February in places like Mauritius, Singapore, New Zealand, and Canada. There's one competition on the calendar for next month, and that's the annual Manuel Suarez Tournament in Cuba. The 2022 Mediterranean Games this July in Algeria is looking for competitors. It started up with just two weight categories for men and two weight categories for women. But after serious lobbying, it's been expanded to five for men, five for women, on one condition, that it gets the weightlifters to fill them. If it doesn't get eight countries entering male athletes and six countries entering female athletes by the middle of next month, the extra category offer is being withdrawn. There are 22 national federations in the Mediterranean area. That can Those are today's headlines. Now good to know. What happens if you have a medical condition and your doctor prescribes a medicine that is on the prohibited list from the World Anti-Doping Agency? Enter the Therapeutic Use Exemption, or TUE. There is no alternative treatment. If there's no alternative treatment, you can apply for permission to take that drug. Your application is reviewed by a panel of physicians. TUEs are granted based on a four-way test. Does the athlete have the condition that requires the drug? Will the drug not produce significant performance enhancement? Is there no permitted therapeutic alternative and that that drug is not required to help recover from something you shouldn't have taken that's also on the prohibited list? And that is good to know. He's the reigning world junior champion. When he won the 109 plus class in Tashkent last year, he was the first weightlifter from his country to win a world championship. Since then, he's also become an Olympian in Tokyo. Welcome Enzo Kowarj of the Netherlands to the weightlifting platform. Welcome. Thank you very much. Now, we're gonna go way back. You're 20 years old. We're gonna go way back. Okay, I don't know how far back, let's find out. How did you find a barbell in your hands for the very first time? What age were you? What was the circumstance? Uh, I was eight years old. Uh, I was playing ice hockey in the winter time, and I was uh, looking for another sport in the summertime. And uh, it was actually funny. I went to the gym first with my grandma, and then came to the gym where I'm still at now. And uh, so I got started at eight years old. That's amazing. Was it obvious as an eight-year-old that you had found your sport? Um, it wasn't obvious right away, but as the years progressed, as I got older, it became more clear that uh, this is what I wanted to do. Now, I understand that not when you started at eight, this wasn't just training. You actually competed at age eight years of age, and there's some video footage out there. Um, what was that like competing at age eight? I can't even imagine it. I can't even remember it, honestly. But <laughs> when I see the videos, I, I can get the memories back, how fun it was for the first time. I see little me there. And uh, it, was, it wasn't it was allowed to compete at such a young age. You're a little older there, I can tell you that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, when I think of the Netherlands and I think of athletes, I hate to tell you this, but the first ones that come to mind are cyclists and speed skaters. Um, yes. Other than hockey, were you active in other sports as you, as you uh, progressed through uh, from age eight and, and beyond? Um, I began, my first ever sport was boxing. 
then I went into judo, then to ice hockey, and uh, then into weightlifting. I did ice hockey and weightlifting simultaneously for I think about five years. Played in the national team as well in, in ice hockey, and then uh, weightlifting full time. Are you sure you're not Canadian? Nope. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> We'd be happy to have you. Not only on the hockey team, but probably uh, in the weightlifting team as well. Now, how much did you compete uh, locally before you started uh, seeing what other people did around uh, around the Netherlands, around Europe, and around the world? Um, I think I competed locally and in the Netherlands for about five years before I started uh, with my first international competition. Five or six years, uh, when I was 14 years old, I did my first uh, under-15 European Championship in Sweden. Now, that's that's the first place I looked. I looked at the IWF website. The first one that they came up with uh, was European Juniors in 2016, that first time you showed up on their radar. Uh, that doesn't seem that long ago to me, but you would have just actually been officially eligible to lift at it as a junior because you were just 15 years of age. Oh, there, yes. there you are. Oh, isn't that? Oh, yeah, that was that's a, fantastic. On the 15, on the 15 uh, ju junior, no, on the 15 European record in the clean and jerk. Fantastic. And there, there. Yeah. How much? What do you got there? You got uh, 161. One, one sixty. Yeah, this one sixty two. What's Four. next? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going to say it's probably going to go up. Um, yep. Now, in 2017 and 2018, you got on the podium at the European Youth, but it wasn't really until Buenos Aires in the Youth Olympic Games when I started hearing about you, uh, where you got the medal for the first time at a worldwide meet. You took bronze in the heaviest weight class. What was that experience like? Now you've been to the Olympics. We'll get to that in a few minutes. But this was the Youth Olympic Games. This is where we're supposed to kind of set the stage for young people to, uh, to do great things. Was that your feeling? That, that, that was an amazing stage to compete. Till this day, it's almost, I think it's still the best uh, competition atmosphere and uh, stage I've ever competed on. Just because of the crowd, the fans, it was amazing, it was packed. Um, the competition I competed in was very excited as well. We went lift for lift with three lifters, me, Risto Risto for Bulgaria, and uh, uh, Ali Reza Youssefi of uh, Iran. And uh, it was a very exciting competition. I went there for gold, got the bronze in the end, but it didn't even matter. The The competition was so fun uh, and I enjoyed it so much that the, the color of the medal didn't even matter. Fantastic. Now, 2019, your, your numbers keep going up, as, as we talked about. Your numbers keep going up. Um, you got a silver medal at European Juniors and a 391 total. Uh, that's pretty close to 400. Uh, were, you, were you aiming for uh, 400 at that time? Or were you happy with the re result? Uh, no, I wasn't aiming for one, uh, 400 at that time. Uh, that was the first time I saw it was very, very close, the 400 mark. Uh, but th there I just aimed for the silver medal. I knew the Armenian lifter, Varazdat uh, Lalayan, was the strongest one there. He snatched you know, 190 plus and uh, clean and jerk up, uh, 230. So I went there with the mindset of winning the highest color of medal that was possible. And it was silver at the time. And I just won it by one kilo on my uh, second clean and jerk. So I was very happy with that. And uh, I tried 225 for red plates for the first time. So that was good as well. Yeah, that's always a milestone when you, when you put those big reds up there. Um, yes, your first over 400 came at World Juniors in Tashkent in 2021. You won gold. Before the medal ceremony, your coach came over and whispered to me, I, I, I was the speaker at the, on the session, uh, how significant an event that was for the yes. Netherlands. How many world titles has your country won now in its history in weightlifting? I don't know. I think, I think I'm, the I'm answer the is one. one. The one. answer is yeah. one. <laughs> and it's you in Tashkent. Um, yes. Does that put more pressure on you now that you're, uh, you know, that 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 you've got a, a, you've set the bar, or is it, are you still kind of flying under the radar in the Netherlands? Because again, it's a speed skating nation. It's a, you know, it's not necessarily a weightlifting nation. Yeah, 
Um, uh, during and after the Olympics, I got a lot of media attention. Um, not as much as speed skating or football or all those big sports, but there's definitely attention. And uh, in the weightlifting community, CrossFit community, there's uh, a lot of attention. Everybody knows me. They support me. I always feel their support. And uh, yeah, it's, it's coming up. It's definitely coming up. Tell me about Tokyo. Uh, you're an Olympian. You're just 20 years of age. Uh, it's an unusual Olympics, but you get to experience uh, the city a little bit. You get to see uh, the incredible venue. You, 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 all the most famous athletes in the world are gathered in the, in, in the athletes' village. What was the experience like? Yeah, it was an amazing experience. Uh, I would say I've never experienced nothing like it, but that was true because I was at the Youth Olympic Games. So it was very similar uh, in terms of venues, uh, athletes' village and all of that. But this one, with what you just said, uh, all the famous athletes, you, they were there. Uh, I got to meet them, speak to them, eat with them even. Uh, it was an amazing experience and everything was top notch. The quality of the equipment was top notch. So it was definitely a uh, once in a lifetime experience. Or hopefully more than a lifetime experience. Oh, oh, oh there you go. That that's, might be the next question or the question after that. <laughs> um, now I saw on social media, Canadians, uh, we don't like cold. We have a lot of cold, but we don't like it. So in the winter, we try and get away. We try and go someplace warm. Ideally, you'd go someplace like, I don't know, Aruba. Do, Aruba is it's... the same situation in the Netherlands where uh, in the middle of winter you want to get away and still train and you find yourself in the former Dutch colony? Yep, definitely. Now, I, I uh, met Bodhi, uh, Santini of Canada and, uh, at the Olympics, and uh, we were talking about it in Tashkent uh, at the World Championship. And he hit me up last minute uh, saying, oh, you're down to come to Aruba? And I said, oh, yes, let's go. And uh, that's how that came about. Now, I, we enjoyed ourselves. The warmth is good for the body as well to, to keep training. And uh, over the New Year's and holidays, uh, we were there. We enjoyed ourselves. Fantastic. Now, what's next? You know, we talked about uh, we talked about Tokyo and not wanting it to be a, a once in a lifetime experience. Um, but the calendar right now is pretty spate. There's not a lot of competitions on the calendar right now. Um, what's next for you? Uh, just I guess recharging and then getting ready to go in for the 2022 season. Definitely, uh, the recharging is almost done. Uh, Aruba helped definitely. Uh, these couple of uh, weeks. I'm rebuilding. I'm getting back into serious training right now. And um, the next competition is the European Championships in Albania. Okay. Well, we'll wish you best of luck there and best of luck going forward. But you're not off the hook yet. We're going to get you to stick around and we're going to put you on the clock next. Yes, fun. On the Clock is our segment where we get to know you a little better, not necessarily as an athlete, but as a person and, and in other ways. Um, we're going to put some pressure on you. We're going to put a one-minute clock up, and then we're going to ask you some questions to get to know you. Let's see what happens. All right. In three, two, one. You have over 10,000 followers on Instagram, your own Wikipedia page. You had a Twitter account, it looks like a few years ago. Within 100, how many people are following your Twitter account? Oh, I have no idea. I haven't checked in in a while. Uh, you haven't. It's no, you only have 33. First song on your playlist. Uh, the first song on your playlist. I don't really have a playlist. I just. W oh, okay. Whatever. whatever comes on. Favorite food? Uh, jollof. Ghani and jollof. Best place that you've visited because of sport? Uh, uh, Buenos Aires 2018 Youth Olympics. Place that you want them to hold a world championship so that you get to visit there? Uh, no place in the world know. you want to go? Okay. I was Last one. Do you look good in Uh Madrid. Madrid, there you go. Fantastic. I appreciate it. Enzo, we very much appreciate you giving us your time. Good luck no as problem. you go forward, man.
Take care very much. Now it's time. It's time for our tip of the week. For our tips of the week, we head to Indonesia, where Tokyo Olympian in the 69 kilo category, Denny, talks about improving technique and mobility before adding more weight on the bar in our tip of the week. Hello guys from the Web Tipping Platform Pan America. My name is Denny and I'm from Indonesia. Today I want to give you a tip about training. Okay, if we talk about training, yeah, training is important for us, for our web in the world, right? Okay, training have three components like training your strength, training your mobility, and training your technique. But please don't focus on your weight first. Focus on your mobility first, focus on your movement first, then you can increase your weight. And don't forget stretching before you start training. Okay, that's something for me, Indonesia. Good job and Thank you for watching and still fine. Thank you. Thanks, Denny. Thanks you for joining us on the weightlifting platform. This week's edition brought to you by the Pan American Weightlifting Federation. If you like what you see, please bookmark us here on YouTube. You can also like the IWF on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, IWFNET. I'm your host, Richard Mason. Good lifting.